Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to an episode of Who Was Really Better. Now, talking about who, we got Noctal versus Manibus. And yeah, this video itself was an absolute blast to record, as uh, there are layers to this Pokemon that you rarely get to talk about. And I actually shared that trait. I actually had originally Pidgeot versus Noctal, but there was no competition. And you would think that Manibus, due to, of course, being a higher tier, is vastly inferior or superior to Noctowl, but that actually isn't the case. There are no both of them, of course, for being a bulky Pokemon that does reliably work at times, Manibus probably more so, but they have an offensive presence, and a really strong one at that, the one really talk about. In Smogon, it's a bit of a shaky aspect to, of course, compare these, as they're known to be, as stated, defensive and work well with that as defoggers and whatnot and have of course passive damage to work well however they do have a stated here an offensive presence that underlyingly is worth talking about in a league aspect this could be extremely key for some matchups and with that said we're going to cover noctile first because impressively it has a lot to offer and then cover of course man was introduced later on uh, so with that said we're going to go over their overarching theme and move pool and stats to find out which one of these two that really are better so right, before talking about Noctowl, we have to cover its, of course, poor typing, or to an extent it's a poor typing. It has a lot of offer, it just, it isn't enough. Uh, immunity to ghosts and ground is, is great. Normal flying do kind of offer that, which is kind of nice, but bug and grass resistance aren't that great. And weakness to electric, ice and rock, there are a lot of really common things here. Um, usually, for example, uh, ground is always paired with rock. And grass is always paired with either electric or ice. So there are just a layer here that naturally isn't suiting for that type of combination. So we need to offer something offensively to work. And well, Noctowl actually does that. It's kind of interesting to say the least. HP, really fair at 100. Attack and its defense at 50. Yeah, that's the low point of Noctowl, if anything. Special attack at 86. While not the most impressive, it's actually a very usable special attack. And the special defense is 96. Yeah, this this Pokemon is absolutely specially defensively bulky. Uh, those 100 HP to get with 96 in its special defense do allow it to take hits. And, uh, well, that is impressive to say the least. Um, it wasn't that viable in its debut in Gold, but this is something that really does push its boundary a little bit. And 17 in its speed, which is... Okay, it's good for a defensive Pokemon, much like my Lolic, we turn into that area where if you are bulky and able to outspeed other bulkier Pokemon, it's a layer of depth that could strategize yourself quite well, and Noctowl represents that. Ability wise, we have Insomnia, Keen Eye, and Tinted Lens. Insomnia is probably the most usable to an extent here defensive wise, but quite frankly, I would never recommend Insomnia or Keen Eye over Tinted Lens. Tinted Lens is the absolute ability as it does allow your resisted hits to take neutral damage so it basically means you can actually go with just one offensive move and you will still hit at least for neutral damage if not super effectively and that's great that is actually uh, freeing up some or of course move pull wise a lot for it and it also allows it to kind of function like John Mega when it comes to actually just dish out damage naturally as stated here special attack at 86 while not the most impressive being forced to take neutral hits no matter what, even though it is a resisted hit. Yeah, that's annoying. That's absolutely annoying. But with that said, a Pokemon is only as good as a move pool allows it to be. So how is the move pool? Well, it's broad. It's absolutely broad and has a lot of really niche things going on. So they're definitely worth the, the debating about. Um, first and foremost, agility. Um, it could allow it to go offensive and agility to resolve its speed here to go as offensive as it must. Um, then with Air Slash, we have Defog, as this Pokemon will work at times as a Defogger. Uh, what do I have Detect, Double Edge, Extra Sensory, Vizard, Frustration, Heat Wave, Hurricane, which could very well be your main attack move with Sea Crystal, Hopper Voice, Magic Coat, Moonlast, Nightshade. Nightshade, if anything, is your main attacking move with um, 
um, if you go for the defensive set with Toxic, because dishing out 50 damage is always nice, much like no seismic toss and whatnot. But Nightshade has only an issue with one matchup, and that's going to be other ghosts or other normal types. Uh, protect, Psychic, Reflect, Rest, Roost, Shadow Ball, Tailwind, Toxic, Whirlwind, Psycho Shift. Um, you could go Flame Orb, and Psycho Shift could actually. As it gives you a resistance to any type of status effect, it also could pass up without a burn to an opposing opponent, which could be quite annoying. Psych up, Rain Dance, and Rain Dance is only there because of C Rain Dance to get with Hurricane. Really, really annoying. Recycle, um, great if you want to capitalize on any type of very uh, hyper beam for the Tinted Lens loan. Hypnosis, Laser Focus, Mean Look, Mimic, Mirror Move, Mud Slap, Natural Gift, Nightmare. Silver Wind, Sucro Noise, which actually Nagatal might actually be one of the better Sucro Noiser, as uh, due to being normal and flying, it hits more for that psychic damage, and that's that's kind of good. You really want Sucro Noise to be combined with them. Um, a common type in a normal, if anything, is just that. Just unfortunately, most normal types are actually especially defensively bulky. And then the last moves are fillers, so bear with me. We have Tackle, Takedown, Thief, Twister, Uproar, Wing Attack, and Work Up. Workup should be as uh, noted actually. Uh, one of the more common set to see in PU even are Workup Agility to get with Hurricane and Roost. And it worked well, as said before. Um, going mono attacking with Hurricane or potentially Air Slash are all you really need. Though double dancing could be at best a kind of a risk. Uh, to go for either to dish out damage is awesome. And quite frankly, Noctowl has two really standard good sets. The Eater is, of course, offensive variant, which are really interesting and tough to prep for, actually, due to the Tinted Lens. I think you can check something with that. Um, but also the defensive set with Nightshade. It's annoying. It's absolutely annoying, as uh, you have Nightshade, usually with Toxic, the Fog, and Roost, and that's quite right. You can even go and actually change Toxic for um, Psycho Shift and then a Flame Over Leftovers, and it just puts this Pokemon into a layer that's really tough to prep for. And League actually does push the boundary a little bit. It is speedy enough to potentially soak hits and roost up potential super effective damage. And while it isn't defense wise the strongest, it absolutely, even though with those extra 100 HP, um, 15 defense really will mean a close combat will most certainly do more than enough on it. And that's something to always keep in mind. Um, but at least it has the HP to kind of bulk things through. And um, yeah, just overall, I think this Pokemon is very, very underrated. It has a lot of layers to it. Even the magic codes is pretty ability that Pokemon can stealth rock or status this Pokemon without being at risk of actually getting coded back or even go for something like Reflect. Or just this Pokemon is a Pokemon that's absolutely giving and uh, should definitely not be slept upon. It does, like I said, offer the team quite a lot of things. And it's whether or not all these aspects are enough to be on par with Manabus. And well, with that said, Let's find out. So first to cover with Manibus is its typing. The Dark and Flying is not necessarily much better than Normal and Flying at all. It, darkness really isn't doing any favors of Flying as Flying really aren't doing any favors towards Dark either as to do much like Normal um, allows it to go neutral versus um, Fighting, but that's about it. The flaws with the typing are as standard. So with that said, we have immunity this time instead is psychic and ground and other now. Dark resistant and grass resistant as usual, but we are now resistant to ghosts instead of immune to it. So a bit of a double-edged sword. I do think that the typing itself do leave you naturally versus more match up to an extent that you have more resistance to switch into. However, you have one more weakness. It's not only the electric eyes and rock we now are weak to fairy also. So there are matchups that absolutely force you off more often, but there are matchups that you can switch into more naturally. So yeah, double-edged sword. Uh, I definitely believe the strongest type combination with flying is only one, and that's going to be the um, ground and flying, and water and flying being close to it. Um, but this typing, it's fair, but absolutely not ideal. However, what is ideal is the bulk of the bus. Uh, Mana bus has 1 in 10 in its HP, which is great. Its defense is at 105. And the special defense, while lower than Noctowl, is still really high if you combine HP, it's probably bulkier, 95, that's impressive. Offensive-wise, maybe not as impressive, as 65 and 55 representatively aren't things to scare off Pokemon with, absolutely not. But the speeds are at 80, 
Yeah, as said before, why Noctowl represents a speedier, bulkier Pokemon, Manabuzz is a speedier, bulkier Pokemon. It is definitely have more speed into it, and naturally, this allows it to pinpoint matchups and, of course, pinpoint speed for a certain matchup. Whether or not it want to be bulkier or speedier, depending on what, of course, we're forced to deal with against. Um, ability wise, kind of a double edged sword here. Overcoat is going to be your main ability. But if you want to go for a more offensive set, you have weak armor, which is Quarite, and big pecs, which I should never, ever <laughs> recommend. However, Overcoat is your main ability in Melee because it does give you immunity to residual damage on Sandstorm and Hail, but it also gives you immunity to the likes of Spore and just powder moves overall. It, it's, it's an extra defensive work well ability which works well with mana bus defensive nature weak armor however is just if you get hit by something you boost your speed by two and um lose your defensive and this could be really interesting and well working if you're going for a more offensive mana bus which for lack of better words it is actually able to do <laughs> because while mana bus move pool is absolutely worse than Noctiles. It, it really is. It has a lot less move it learns. It is better in just what it does. Because we have Air Slash here, we have Brave Bird, Dark Pulse, Defog, Facade, Fall Play. And Fall Play probably the one that we're going to focus a bit more on here. Because Fall Play will allow you to hit any offensive physical threat really well. Because you have a low attack stack that means that Fall Play will be greatly boosted versus their attack sizes as you get your base power between the 65 base versus whatever of course you're fending off against and of course you go minus nature boost even further it is real annoying to fend off against uh, frustration heat wave knockoff really good defensive capability to be able to knock off out items items <laughs> nasty block yes you can boost your special attack by two and that's boosting yourself to an okay decent level it definitely gets stronger than Noctile if one boost that's that, that that's as far as it go uh u-turn pivot option always relevant for defensive pokemon tailwind taunt and this is where that speed here kicks in have been able to taunt other defensive pokemon well how impressive isn't that and uh, much like i used uh, for example jealous and the stall breaker regliscor is probably the best stall breaker uh, Manabus is a stall breaker and pull that off naturally due to, of course, the accessibility of Roost and Foul Play and, of course, U-Turn. It is just, it's a Pokemon that just keeps on giving. Uh, Shadow Ball, Toxic, Whirlwind, Block, Bone Rush, Confide, Iron Defense, Flatter, Rock Tomb, which is awesome. <laughs> Fake Tears, which I should never recommend. Uh, mean look, mirror move. Mirror move is only there because of the secret to aspect ability. If you go for weak armor and the C mirror move, you boost yourself by two in your attack when you go for C mirror move. And potentially, of course, whatever moves that was used before that. And uh, those extra two in its speed will potentially make this Pokemon quite interesting. Lake and Sweeper. It's very, very uh, interesting to see that plan play through because you'd never expect it that it can actually work quite well. Uh, pluck to snag an item from a potential Snorlax, you want to death check you. Snarl, Snatch, Thief and Torment. Uh, and this is a Pokemon that used Torment quite well. Torment is basically a move that uh, um, if you use it, the opposing team or attacker can't use the same move. You share them and usually U-turn is a thing that people try to get out of and also knock off. You usually come and go to share. Um, so being able to torment the Pokemon over taunting them could be very annoying because it means that you're caught in that matchup and need to be forced to switch out. And that could allow you to potentially go for another round, Toxic or Taunt, whatever switch that comes in. Um, or even worse, Block and Torment could also work if you want to read really nasty. But overall, uh, Manabus, while having a defined set, uh, it, it moves it gets are really relevant. What is as varied as I would say Noctile is, it still is something to keep in mind that it actually is working. Um, the only thing or flaw it has is that it is quite passive. Without foul play, it really is forced to attack and it doesn't attack that very well. But defensive measures are in the plenty and you know, defog and toxic and you know, taunt and you know just you can do all the stall breaker set that it does them really well because the speeder allows it to work, <clears throat> to work very well. Critical course roost that allowed it to have a good stamina throughout the matchups. So overall, Manabas is incredible in many ways and should never, never be underestimated. So for me, this matchup boils down to two individual things. You know, basically, what would you want of these Pokemon to do? The defensive set 
and offensive set. Defensive-wise, Noctal is able to be just as special defensive as Mana Bus and probably do that quite well. However, defensive-wise, physical, there is just no competition. Mana Bus is absolutely better there. Uh, it takes hit a lot better and it can shake him off with roofs and whatnot. It just, while both are able to do it, it's very clear that Mana Bus takes them better. And of course, with the passive damage, Foul Play versus Nightshade, yeah. Foul play is going to be better most of the time, even if you take the Psycho Shift variant of the Noctowl in mind, one has to take into consideration that you force yourself to get Burnford first, and the other is that you actually, of course, need to be speedier to take that physical hit better. So overall, since both can Toxic, both can Roost, um, Mana Bus has that better defensive aspect ability with Taunt, Torment, and U-Turn. It's just so many things it does right and works naturally in Noctowl doesn't necessarily have that in him. However, offensive-wise, Noctala, I do believe, is better. The Sea Hurricane variant is great, and while it's gonna be forgotten now that we go into Generation 8, it's still great to know that Noctal actually has a really, really strong viability with Tinted Lens. Um, I could absolutely say that Mana Bus has uh, a layer to it, where it could work offensive-wise, but usually it's a very, very high risk and high maintenance to an extent, as it is a trump card that will fall no matter what. Noctowl is hard to switch into, has a lot more offensive natural bulk to it, but you don't use this for their offensive progress. We use them for the defensive capabilities, and there is no competition. Manabas absolutely wins this matchup. But for this worth, like I said there, the original matchup was versus Pidgeot, and Noctowl actually showcased to have a lot more to offer than Pidgeot ever could, even with U-Turn in mind. It is a flaw with Noctowl to not be able to U-Turn out, it absolutely is. Consider it's a flying type, it most flying type can U-turn. Looking at Jaros, what's wrong with you? But but quite frankly, like that's a great thing to have. And both work well with Defog and whatnot. They're great option for the tier that represents uh, to potential defogging. However, in in the leagues it just it's one of those things. You, you really want the Pokemon to if it's gonna be forced to be defensive, it's gotta work defensive. Noctal won't do that for most matchup. The, the Typhoon was allowed it. it, it can't stall break, it won't win versus other bulky Pokemon, it just becomes um, a, a lesser chancy to an extent, it just isn't worth it. But offensive wise, Noctal has a lot to celebrate and I'm really happy I got to talk about that as it is something that we rarely cover. Um, Noctal is going to be most likely regarding moving into next gen. And I really hope it isn't booted. I really hope it gets a gallery form, whatever. This Pokemon is awesome and it should be celebrated more than this today. However, Manabas has stated here, of course it is better. But at least I got to talk about both in a significant way to you know, share their niches and what define these two as their viability will probably just keep some racing. Hell, I'll try to use Noctal myself just because of this video because I realize how really awesome it is and it's absolutely a sleeper hit so that's it thank you as always for watching and join us next week where we're gonna look upon these pokemon